Welcome guys. In the previous video we have seen about the construction and working principle of uh, sliding mesh gearbox that we can see in this image and the video is there in the suggestion. In sliding mesh gearbox the gears are slided over the output shaft in order to mesh with the other gear. So the main drawback involved in this sliding mesh gearbox is damage of gear teeth. If any gear is slided over the shaft in order to mate with another gear the gear teeth will be damaged because the speed of all those gears will be different. So in order to reduce this drawback, the constant mesh gearbox was invented. So let us see how this constant mesh gearbox works in this video. As we seen in the previous case, the construction is more or less similar. There is a clutch shaft. From the engine, this power is coming to this clutch shaft and the power is then fed into the gear number 2 and here you can see a lay shaft and this is the output shaft, this is a spline shaft. So as you can see in this image, all the gears are meshed with one another in the constant mesh gearbox. That's why it is named as constant mesh gearbox. All the gears are constantly in mesh with the other gear. But one thing we have to know, when the gearbox is in neutral position, no power will be transmitted to the output shaft even though all the gears are in meshed condition. Let's see how is that. The clutch shaft supplies the power from the engine to this gear number 1. So the gear number 1 rotates. As the gear number 2 is meshed with gear number 1 it will also rotate. Also the lay shaft is connected with this gear number 2. So the whole lay shaft will rotate so that the gear number 3, 4, 5 everything will rotate. Also the gear number 8, 7, 6 are meshed with 3, 4, 5. All the gears in the system will rotate. But this spline shaft will not rotate because this gear number 8, 7 and 6 are mounted over this spline shaft with a bearing. Or that's like a loose pulley. Whereas here you can see D2 and D1. These are called dock clutches or sliding dock clutch. The dock clutches are fixed with this spline shaft. So whenever this dock clutch rotates, the shaft will rotate. But whenever this gears rotate, the shaft need not to rotate because they are mounted with bearing or like a loose pulley. So this is the combination. This gear 1, 2, 4, 7 is the first gear. And gear number 1, 2, 3, 8 is the second gear. And obviously the stride transmission will be the top gear. And the reverse gear is here that is 1, 2, gear number 5, 6. In between there will be an idler gear. Let us see how this first gear works. If you want to engage the first gear, the driver needs to move this dock clutch 1, D1 towards the left hand side in order to make a contact between this dock clutch and the gear number 7. So when this dock clutch 1 is in contact with this gear number 7, the power from gear number 7 will be transmitted to this spline shaft through this dock clutch 1. So now the power transmission will be from gear number 1 to 2, 2 to 4, 4 to 7 and 7 to the output shaft. This gear ratio will be achieved here as we see in the image gear number 2 is having more number of teeth than the gear number 1 thereby it reduces the speed and increases the torque. Similarly here you can see gear number 4 is smaller than the gear number 7 thereby uh, the speed will be reduced further and torque will be increased further. So this is gear number 1, first gear. Let us move to the second gear. In the second gear, we have to disengage this clutch D1, dock clutch 1 from this gear number 7 and we have to engage this gear number 8 with the dock clutch 2. So this engagement will be done by the gear selector system. We will cover that later. When the dock clutch 2 is meshed with this gear number 8 through the dock clutches, what happens? The speed of the gear number 8 will be transmitted to the output shaft. This is the power flow. It will be power will be coming from the clutch shaft to the lay shaft, and from gear number 3, it will be transmitted to gear number 8. The speed of gear number 8 will be transmitted to the output shaft. This is the second gear. As we can see in the image. Gear number 3 is somewhat bigger than gear number 4. So the gear reduction will not be that much as in gear number 1. First gear, the second gear ratio will be less than the first gear ratio. So the speed reduction will be less 
and the torque is relatively low and if you want to move to the top gear we need to disengage the second gear and the transmission will be go on the transmission will be disconnected then we have to connect this dog to to the dog teeth in the input shaft gear that is clutch gear so when it happens a straight transmission will take place so the transmission will not come from different gear ratios the one is to one transmission will take place if the sliding dog clutch is moved towards the left hand side so thereby we can achieve the top gear ratio then let us move to the reverse gear ratio if you want to go to reverse gear we have to move the dog teeth one to the gear number six so when it happens the power transmission will be like this the clutch shaft will rotate the gear number one then gear number two will be rotated from this the gear number five will rotate the gear number six so here we are having an idler gear thereby the rotation will be reversed uh, for example if the gear number one is rotating in clockwise direction the two will rotate in anti clockwise direction similarly five will rotate in anti clockwise so the idler gear will rotate in clockwise direction and finally gear number six will rotate in anti clockwise direction so the direction is reversed that's how the reverse gear is achieved so now we can ask what's the main advantage of this constant mesh gearbox from the previous sliding mesh gearbox in sliding mesh gearbox the gear tooth damage will take place because the gears are slided one over another whereas in this constant mesh gearbox all the gear teeth are meshed with one another and there is no sliding mesh here so the gear teeth damage will not take place instead of that we are using a dog clutch the dog clutch will having two or more teeth so that tooth may damage we can easily replace that dog clutch tooth so this is an advantage that we are having in constant mesh gearbox over sliding mesh gearbox and let us see the next type of gearbox that is synchro mesh gearbox in the next video hope you have understood the sliding mesh gearbox and constant mesh gearbox thank you